Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video, Enabling and Printing Time Codes, I'm going to show you how to turn on and position time codes within your document, as well as how to ensure that they come out on your printout or your ASCII. I'm in Eclipse and I've created a document with time codes for this example. I'm going to open up my time code sample file. And in this document, I have a large amount of text with associated steno and time codes. And so this is a good document to use to display time codes. Documents that you write in real time or with most modern writers will automatically accumulate time codes while you're writing. You don't generally need to do anything to enable them on newer steno machines. However, older steno machines sometimes did have a time code setting. In Eclipse, however, when you're writing real time, your text is automatically associated with time codes every time you write a stroke on your steno machine or utter a voice steno stroke. If I right click in my steno notes, I can choose relative to see a stopwatch version of the time codes in my document, or I can right click and choose absolute to see the time of day that all of these strokes took place. I'll set my time codes in my note bar back to none. The time codes that you see in your note bar don't actually have anything to do with the time codes that print out. Those are a true representation of the time codes, but those are just informative and for display purposes. If you want to print your time codes, you can't just turn them on in the note bar. Since time codes often end up at the left hand side of the document by default, I'm going to first go to my user settings and to the display tab, and I'm going to turn on left margin so that if they do show up in the left margin, I'll be able to see them. After turning on the left margin, in order to actually enable the time codes, I'll need to go to the document tab. By default, when you have a document open and you enter the document tab of your user settings, the changes that you make will apply only to that document. I'll have the option to make these changes to my master format once I'm done if I desire to. For right now, I'm just going to click the time codes button within the document tab. And this is the window where you can set up your time codes. There are a number of settings at the bottom of the window specific to how your time codes appear on the page. The first option is the time printing dropdown, and this is where you choose how often in the document you want your time codes to show up. The most common selections are probably every line or every five lines. I'm going to choose every line, and next you can choose whether to display the absolute time, the relative time, or both. Absolute time will display the time of day that the statement took place. The relative time will display a stopwatch style time where beginning with your first stroke, the time code will begin with zero and it will count up. Absolute time codes are probably more popular. I'm going to choose absolute. You do have the option to display both if requested. However, it's not very common that both will be required and if you do need to display both, it usually takes up quite a lot of space. The next option that I have to choose from is whether I wish for the time to be displayed in 12 hour with or without AM PM or in 24 hour military time. I'm going to choose 12 hour to do just regular time of day. And the last two options that I have are the font for my time codes and also the size. Now this size option does not actually refer to the font size. If I click the font button, there is a size setting in here. Generally speaking, your timecode font is going to be the same font as the rest of your document, unless you have a specific purpose for changing it. I'm going to leave my font the same font that the rest of my document uses, and the size setting that's actually in the timecode window actually refers to the number of time units that are displayed in the timecode. All time codes in Eclipse are made up of four parts, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. The size setting controls how many of those units are displayed. If I leave it set to three, like it is now, I'll get hours, minutes, and seconds. If I set it to two, I'll get hours and minutes. However, if I set it to four, I'll get hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Frames are not often desirable, but sometimes they may be requested when your transcript is going to be used for post-production or video syncing purposes. I'm going to leave my size set to three so that I'll get hours, minutes, and seconds. And so what I've asked for is four time codes on every line. 
I've asked for them to be in absolute or time of day format. I've asked for them to be in 12 hour format instead of 24 hour military format. And I've asked for hours, minutes, and seconds as far as the number of units that I'd like. So now that I have all of those set the way that I want them, I can press OK. Now after I hit OK out of my settings, I see that I do have my time codes and they're right next to my line numbers. There are a couple options that I have to correct this, since the AM is immediately next to my line numbers. I can go back to Alt-U Document Time Codes, and instead of choosing 12 hour, I can choose 12 hour no AM PM to get rid of the AM PM and give myself a little bit of a distinction between the time code and the line number. If you don't need the AM and PM there, this option is fine. However, if I do need the AM and PM, there are a couple other options of how I can handle the time positioning. In the document tab where it says page length, there's a time code margin setting, and by default this is usually set at zero. This means that your time code is as far to the left as it can go. And so if I do want the AM and PM there, I have a couple other options. I can either move my line numbers and my text over to the right to give more room for the time codes, or I could move the time codes to the right hand side of my format if that's acceptable. Depending on the client, either solution might be correct. If I do want to move them all the way to the right, what I can do, where it says inches for time code margin, I can type in a large number like six inches to get them moved most of the way to the right. I can use the up arrow to position them exactly where I'd like them to be at that point. So now my time codes are on the right hand side of the page and there's plenty of room between the time codes and the page boundary. However, if I did need to have my time codes on the left and I need more room between the time code and my line numbers, I can increase my left print margin to give my document more room between the time codes and the line numbers. And once I have my text in the place that I want it, I can simply reorient my box to fit within the text. Now that the time codes are visible, I can make a PDF or print them to see them. I can go to Production, Output to PDF. After hitting Output to PDF, I can click Print Image Options, and there's a time code option here. This is always going to be checked by default, but if ever you do have your time codes turned on and you don't wish to print them, you can come in here and uncheck this box to prevent printing them. By default, this should always be checked. I'm going to hit Cancel out of here, and if I press OK, you see that I have a PDF of my document, and if I scroll down to the area where the time codes actually began in my document, the time codes will also begin in my PDF. And so I have a time code for every line, and it's formatted with the AM as I requested. If I make an ASCII by going to Production, Output to ASCII, I can make sure that on this window, Allow Time Codes is checked. And if I press OK, an ASCII file will be created. I can hit Control F to open the ASCII file for my time code sample document. And if I scroll down, the same place where the time code started in my document, the time codes also start in my ASCII file. And they'll continue all the way through the document until there are no time codes to display. And that is one thing that I did not check yet. There may be some pages at the end of my document that I wish to omit time codes for, such as block files that were read in or something like that. It looks like there are no time codes associated with my index and appearances pages at the top of my document. However, let's check the end. If I go to the end, to around page 97, I see that my errata sheet begins, and I also have time codes here that occurred when I read this file into my document. There are a few pages here that I don't need any of these time codes for. What I'm going to do is go into the document and simply omit the time codes from the end of this file. So I'm going to go to the end of the document and I'll find the beginning of my errata sheet. And I actually don't have testimony on the last two lines of this page, so this is where I'm going to insert my omit elements command to hide my time codes. I'll do Alt N, omit elements, and I'll check time codes. 
And from this point down where my testimony ends, I don't have any more time codes. My errata sheet and the rest of my certificate pages at the end of my file don't have any time codes any longer. And so if I go to production, output to PDF, and make a PDF, since I know time codes is always going to be checked by default, I can look in my document now and my time codes correctly begin at my first byline. And if I scroll down to the end of the document, my time codes correctly end at the last on record statement. And if I make a new ASCII by going to production, output to ASCII, ensuring that allow time codes is checked, I'll press OK. And I can open that new ASCII. And again, my time codes begin at my first byline. But if I go to the end of this document, I no longer have time codes for my certificate pages and my errata pages at the end of my document. And so enabling and controlling the display of your time codes in Eclipse is incredibly simple and requires only a few steps. If I wanted these settings to be permanent for all of my future documents, I could go to my user settings, to my document tab, I could simply hit the copy button at the top to copy those new changes to my master format. If there are other changes that I made that I don't want to apply to my master format, but I do want to apply the time code changes, I could simply choose master format and hit time codes and make the same selections in this window that I made for the document that ended up working out for me. And I would also need to obviously adjust my time code margin if that was something that I adjusted. Time code printing and production is a very common question that we get, and I hope that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about time codes or any other features of Eclipse or Advantage Software's other great products, we do offer anytime support 24 seven. Tech support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288 3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy our content, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content. Thanks so much and have a great day.